Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. It's a mountain. It's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang. Today you're watching another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. Mukbang is an eating show, so we're going to be eating and chatting and having a great time. So if you enjoy eating shows, don't forget to subscribe. And today, guys, we have a beautiful feast in front of me. We are eating one of my favorite things in the world, mushrooms. Okay, we're having a mushroom pate. Okay, it's a mushroom pate. I mean, this is this is a spread, guys. This is a spread. Now, I don't have the gift of food art. <laughs> I don't have a food art talent in my uh, resume, but I tried my best. And you know, it looks, it, looks, it, looks, it looks good, you know? All right, guys, so I'm gonna go through what I have going on here because it's all very exciting. So we have uh, a few different types of mushrooms. So we've got here some enoki mushrooms that you guys know. These are some of the best. Okay, and I've seasoned everything with like a gochujang, soy sauce, rice vinegar, uh, sweetener type of mixture, and I'm very excited about it. So we've got enoki mushrooms here, and we also have some oyster mushrooms, which again, same type of sauce. We've got the delicious oyster mushrooms. Uh, reminds me of like a meaty texture, and it's so good. And then of course, we've got another one of my favorite mushrooms, which is king oyster mushrooms. So I kind of try to make them into like a scallopy sort of thing. If you guys ever want to make like vegan sort of scallops, okay? King oyster mushrooms are great because not only do they have a very similar kind of texture to scallops, but they also kind of look like scallops. You know what I mean? You can make them look like scallops. And then of course, you guys, we also have some uh, something else. We actually have a little tofu and mushroom mixture here. Once again, very similar sauce. Lots of gochujang. There's some onion in here. And we also have some leftover mushroom in this mixture as well. But you guys know I like to have some, you know, slightly higher protein options for all of my meals which is why I also like to add in like tofu or beans or something like that into my meals otherwise I'll feel hungry very quickly okay so we've got a delicious tofu concoction I'm very excited about that and then we have some seasoned rice again I just kind of used similar kind of seasonings it's like a red sort of situation going on here okay so I just had some rice I have to have rice of course I mean is that even a question so exciting we also have some vegan kimchi of course if you need a vegan kimchi recipe you can check out my mom's recipe it is so good it is the best vegan kimchi ever I'll link that down below and then just in case I've got some pickled radishes right here this is tammuji you guys know I love this stuff all right guys my mouth is watering we gotta get started okay so first Let's get the bubbly going, okay? Let's get the bubbly going. So today we have the uh, strawberry bubbly, my friends. You guys know my obsession. One day they're gonna be like, this is really bad for you. There's chemicals in this. And I've been drinking like three cans a day, fantastic. Just kidding, I don't think it's bad for you, it's just it's just flavored, you know, sparkling water. But why does this taste so good compared to other ones? Oh, so good. All right, guys, we're gonna dig in. I'm so excited. Okay, I think we're gonna get a little bit of the rice. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Seriously, guys, even the rice just looks good. I'm just gonna have a bite of the rice. Mmm. Mmm. Tofu. Mm. Mm. If you guys need a similar tofu recipe, the braised tofu recipe that I think I have in both my recipe ebooks is definitely the bomb. It's very similar to this one, what I made. Mm. All right, we got the tofu, the rice. We're gonna add some oyster mushroom on top. Mm. 
Mmm. So good. I know I said it's a mushroom party, but it's turning into a tofu party. Tofu and rice party. Mmm. All right. Rice, enoki mushroom. Ooh. Let's have a bite of this. Mmm. This is so good. The textures, guys. What's your favorite type of mushroom? Would you like to let me know? All right, let's go in with the king oyster mushroom scallop. Mmm. Mmm. I can't decide on which one's my favorite. Everything is so good. The rice is delicious. The tofu is delicious. The king oyster mushroom was so good. You know what? I'm hmm. A little bit of this like uglier king oyster mushroom situation. <laughs> Yum. Mmm. Yum. Mmm. Guys, how's it going? <laughs> I feel like I'm always asking you how you doing? How you doing? You okay? Comment down below, where are you guys from? Where are you living right now? Like, what's happening? And I was just thinking about this the other day. And I'm just thinking, like, you know, it's kind of crazy to think about. But I'm sure you guys have thought about this too. But it's like, little decisions. Maybe not little decisions, but, but decisions that may not seem like they would be life-altering at the time can be very actually very life altering, you know? I was thinking if I had never moved to London, if you guys don't know, I lived in London from 2014 to 2016 and I was there on a working holiday visa. And I started my YouTube channel when I was in London in 2015. So I was thinking if I never lived in London, would I have started Cheap Lazy Vegan? I don't know if I would have, you know what I mean? Let's have a bite of this. I have here a tri mushroom uh, spoonful. Okay, we've got We've got all three. We've got the oyster, the king oyster, and the enoki, okay? If I'd never moved to London, I don't even think I would have gone vegan that quickly. I think I would have waited longer because I became vegan when I got to London. Before that, I was living with my parents. So I was like, oh, it's like hard to be fully vegan. I was pescatarian for a long time, for like four years or something like that before I actually moved to London. And then I was vegan when I moved to London because I was like living on my own and I was like, okay, well, I've already kind of gotten used to eating mostly plant-based. So what's my excuse? You know what I mean? So sometimes I'm like, wow, if I had never moved, not even just to London, but my parents moved me to Canada. You know, we moved to Canada when I was eight years old, you know? And if I hadn't moved to Canada, I would obviously be a very different person. Would I be vegan? Probably not if I grew up in Korea. Ooh, look at this, look at this. Look at this, look at this. It's a mountain. It's a tofu mountain. It's a tofu mushroom mountain. Mm. 
Mm. Wow. So yeah, I don't know what the moral of the story is, but whatever you want to do, you should try and do it because you never know what's going to happen with your life. If I didn't move to London, I may have not gone vegan, at least not right away. And even if I went vegan, who knows if I would have started a YouTube channel. And then what? A lot of people ask me like, if you weren't doing YouTube, what would you be doing? And I'm like, I have no idea. I can't really imagine myself doing anything else, you know? I don't know. It's crazy how these things kind of happen. I don't really believe in this like, everything happens for a reason. I never say that because I'm like, what does that even mean? I feel like half the people that say it, they don't even know what that means. But it is crazy how sometimes you're like, oh, how did that happen? <laughs> Series of events lead to different results, you know? If I had never moved to Canada and I stayed in Korea, I wouldn't speak English, would I? Not, not as well as I do now, you know? And if I never moved to Canada, would I have moved to London? Probably not. <laughs> so here's a series of crazy events. <laughs> I moved from Korea to Canada when I was eight. So if I'd never moved to Canada, then I wouldn't have gone on exchange to Italy and Singapore. So when I was in university, I did an exchange, a study abroad program to Italy, and then I did a study abroad program to Singapore. Now, if I didn't go to Italy, I may not have gone to Singapore. That's another thing. <laughs> so I did Singapore, and then that's where I met uh, some friends that lived in the UK, that were from the UK. And I'm pretty sure that also influenced my decision to later on go on a working holiday to London. So if I didn't go to Italy, I wouldn't have gone to Singapore. And then if I didn't go to Singapore, I wouldn't have gone to London. And if I didn't go to London, I may not have gone vegan. And if I didn't go vegan, I may not have a YouTube channel. So I may not be talking to you right now. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm. So yeah, isn't that all very crazy? Also, never underestimate the power of the influences around you. That's another thing, you know? Mm. Mm. Seriously, these are so scallopy. Anyway, one thing that my mom told me before, when they were trying to decide like where to move, like from Korea, there were three choices, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. I think I told you guys this before, but again, not all of you watch all my videos, so I have to repeat myself, okay?
So, they chose Canada because at that time, New Zealand, New Zealand immigration was a lot harder. And at that time, apparently Australia, I don't know about now, but Australia was still very racist, apparently toward like Asian people, especially. So they didn't want to move to Australia. So they chose Canada. But what if I had moved to Australia? There's a lot of Koreans in Australia, actually. What if I moved to New Zealand? My life would be so different, right? So, it's all very crazy to think about. Sometimes I wish I could have multiple lives. I always say I want, I want to clone myself, you know? If there was like five of me, I could do multiple different things with my life and see how it all turns out, you know? Like at that moment, eight years old, my parents are trying to decide, okay, Australia, New Zealand, or Canada. What if there was three of me and we all moved to Australia, New Zealand, and Canada? We all just kind of separated it. And 20 years later, we're like, okay, what happened? <laughs> How do we all turn out? Wouldn't that be so cool? Actually, there was a movie on Netflix. I think it was on Netflix. It was a documentary a few years ago and it was like the real life parent trap. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it was a documentary about this Korean girl that mm, she grew up in the States because she was adopted at a young age. And she is like kind of like an actress. So she's obviously like online and putting herself out there. And apparently one day she got a DM, not a DM, yes, a DM, a Facebook inbox message. What are they, is it called a DM? Okay, I don't know. She got a DM from this girl saying that she's from France, she's living in France, and she was adopted from Korea. And she was like, oh, my friend saw you and thought that we looked very similar. Turns out they were twins that were separated and adopted out into France and US. So they got separated and they got adopted into two different families. One grew up in France and one grew up in the US and they looked exactly the same and then they ended up like reuniting and it was like such a good movie. It was like feel good, you know, and then I was like, oh my god, that would be so cool. Maybe like somewhere out there is your long lost twin. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Have any of you guys been adopted? I wonder what that's like, you know? I used to watch this show. It was a Korean show. I think it was called, in translation, in English, I think it was called Going, uh, We're Going to Meet Now or something. Now We Are Going to Meet. Something like that. And it was a show where they would reunite adoptees, are they called adoptees? Like children that have been adopted with their birth mothers. And most of them are not living in Korea. Most of them are living you know, outside of Korea. One of the things about Korea is that I think a lot of people don't adopt, a lot of people don't adopt in Korea, but a lot of kids get put off for adoption or at least they did, I don't know about right now. But um, I don't think that adopting another child is a big you know, concept in Korea. It's still very traditional in that they still really want their own blood, you know? 
which I mean, I don't really understand that, but that's kind of one of the things. So a lot of Korean kids actually end up getting adopted outside of Korea. So there's a lot of Korean adoptees like all over the world, I believe. And um, what was the purpose of, oh yes. So I was like, I lost my train of thought. Let me have a bite, okay. So, again, I lost my train of thought. Oh my God, what's happening to my brain? Mm. Mm. It's just filled with shrooms, you know? Oh yeah, so the show, basically the premise, it was so sad. I really bawled my eyes out every time I watched the show because the the mothers of these, you know, adopted children, the birth mothers were so sad. You know, a lot of times, obviously, you know, they didn't want to give up their child. In a lot of ways, they did it almost because they kind of had to, maybe because, I don't know, society pressures. Again, this is like also many years ago, back in the day when women, you know, it was very heavily frowned upon to have a child out of wedlock, for example, and to get pregnant and all of these things. It was like shameful. And I'm sure it still is in a lot of ways, especially compared to like Western culture. And I'm not saying it's completely like not shameful in Western culture. I'm sure there's still a lot of stigma against like single mothers or stuff like that, but it's definitely not as bad as in Korea, especially back in the day. So just even the idea of a woman you know, having a baby outside of wedlock, that itself was just not okay. So I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of women felt the need to, you know, give up their children. But obviously it's very devastating and heartbreaking, I'm sure. Not that I've ever done that, but I mean, I can imagine that it is very difficult, probably one of the most difficult things they have to do. So even after like 20 years or so, they're still like traumatized and very sad. And so they still wanna, you know, see their child after, you know, 15, 16, 20 years. So the premise is basically that, you know, the birth mother wants to meet their child, her child, but she doesn't know where they are. So the show, they find the child and usually they're abroad, right? I think they were always abroad. They're always like France or the States or England or something. So they find the child and then they talk to them. They're like teenagers or adults now. And they're like, do you want to meet your birth mom? And I think most of them did. Most of them did say yes. Some of them more reluctantly, but there were some cases I think where they didn't want to because of, I don't know, multiple reasons. Maybe they felt like they were abandoned or you know, whatever the reason may be. So that show, every time they reunite, I bawled my eyes out, I was so sad because the mom is like crying. And then because they grew up in like, the kids, they grew up in like the States or France or England or somewhere, they don't speak Korean at all. They grew up basically not with Korean people. So they don't speak Korean. So they have like a translator and everything. But yeah. It is crazy. I always thought when I was watching the show, I wonder if I would want to meet my biological parents, you know? Like, I would think that I would, 
my initial gut reaction was like, of course I would want to meet them, but who knows? I was never adopted, so I don't actually know what it feels like. You know, maybe people do feel like they've been abandoned, and plus they don't know the full story, or maybe they feel bad for their adopt parents or adoptive parents because they think oh well these are the people that actually raised me you know But yeah, if any one of you is adopted, let me know. Maybe if I was a teenager and I was still in my like rebellious phase where I was angry at everything, in that case, maybe I wouldn't want to meet my birth parents if I were adopted because I'd be like, no, screw them because they, you know, like, you know, teenagers, you know, you're a little bit more emotional at that time. You know, a lot of times you think the world is against you or something like that. So maybe, but maybe if I was like 30 at the time when my birth parents wanted to meet me, then I would think about it a little bit more, maybe? <laughs> Again, I don't know. Maybe I'll adopt a little girl from Korea, you know? I always thought about that. Cause you know, I'm very open to adopting. Okay, I think I've talked about it before. But I'm more open to adopting than having my own child. That's what I'm leaning toward is adoption. My god, that was so good. Oh, so yeah, what do you guys think? Would you adopt? Are you open to adopting? A lot of people think that, or they say that like, oh, I don't know if I can love, you know, a child as much if it wasn't my own. I've had people say that, which is, I mean, very honest. <laughs> but the thing is, I think about that and I'm like, well, people get dogs and cats and other pets and they're not obviously your flesh and blood, but you know, you love your pets so much. I mean, I do. They're basically my children. So if I can love a dog or a cat or, you know, whatever animal that comes into my life, why wouldn't I be able to like love a human being as my child? I don't know. That's my thought process, but um, obviously not everyone agrees and that's okay. But yeah, guys, so that's it. Um, that was my mushroom party. It's over now. It's very much over. It's gone. And my battery light is going off so i better let you guys go thank you so much for watching guys as always leave me some comments down below your thoughts on anything we discussed today if you enjoyed this video of course give it a big thumbs up and of course guys if you're new to this channel and you enjoy this type of thing don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye